Good morning. Welcome to worship. I could not hear the bell. I heard it, but then I didn't hear it. And so sometimes it's better on some Sundays, Ken. It's better than others that we found. So anyway, welcome to our live stream of visitors. And if you are a visitor here, we're glad you're here. And we're glad if you're a member here that you're here as well. So we have a birthday and it's Joanne Van Holden's birthday today. So you have to sing extra loud because she's watching on the live stream. So I'll try to start it and make sure you sing loud enough that you'll drown my uh, off key if I start it wrong. All right, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. birthday, Joanne. Hope she sang with us. <laughs> so we're going to, right now we're going to pray for Eli, which is the great grandson of Joanne and Dwayne. So let's pray for him. Heavenly Father, we just come to you, Lord, and we just ask for your, your healing here of Eli and, and just place on the doctor's hearts what, uh, what direction to go there, Lord. We they just can't seem to figure out those seizures. Well, God, just be be with that family and give them a peace that, that you are there and, and be with Eli and just wrap your loving arms around him. But everything is according to your will, Lord, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to welcome Pastor George and Leslie back. Thank you so much for... Uh, for your willingness to serve here at our congregation. You've been uh, a blessing to us, and so we can ask that you continue to be a blessing to us. So with that, let's worship. Well, again, uh, welcome and greetings to all of you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, this morning. And uh, thank you for having me back to be able to share uh, the word and to be in fellowship with you this morning. Our call to worship... Uh, Actually, I've chosen a little one different than what we have in the bulletin. And so a reading from Psalm 67. May the God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, that your ways may be known on the earth, your saving power among all the nations. And let the people praise you, O God, and let all the people praise you. And let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for your you are the judge of, for the people with equality and guidance the nations upon the earth. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. And the earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us and let, a, let all the ends of the earth fear him. Uh, let us pray. Father God, we just thank you that your word is true and that, Lord, as we gather, you are here amongst us. And, Lord, you are working by your Holy Spirit in each and every one of us here and those who are listening on the live stream. And, Lord, we pray now that you would touch us in a special way with your encouragement, with a special blessing of this day that may, may see you in all things and give you praise, honor, and glory as we are gathered here in your name to give you honor and to give you glory in all that is said and done. We again, we give you thanks for Jesus, the risen and triumphant Savior. Amen. Our praise song, uh, Cornerstone. Good morning. In Psalm 118, verses 21 through 23, it says, I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Will you stand if you're able and sing and praise God with our first song, Cornerstone?
48, number 5, I believe. Yes. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, to live, suffer, and die for our sins. We know that we have eternal life without this costly sacrifice. Thank you that he became our sacrificial lamb so that we might have the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. We believe your word, which tells us that there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus the Lord. Forgive us and cleanse us from all sins. Help us in all our words, thoughts, and deeds to honor you and your sacrifice that you was given us. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. May you receive the declaration of our Lord and Savior. Our Almighty God and Heavenly Father has had mercy upon us and has given us his only Son to die for us. The promise of Scripture is that whoever confesses his sin to the Lord will receive forgiveness through the faithfulness and righteousness of Christ. God granted this may be the experience of us all. On the other hand, I declare to you the impenitent unbelieving that so long as they continue in their impenitence, God has not forgiven their sins and will assuredly visit their iniquity upon them if they do not turn from their evil ways and come to true repentance and faith in Jesus Christ before the day of the grace comes to an end. Amen. You may be seated at this time. We will have our scripture reading this morning. I don't know who was reading. Oh, okay. The first lesson this morning is Acts 2, 42 through 47. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. The epistle lesson this morning is 1 Peter 2, 19 through 25. For this is a gracious thing, when mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For this... For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to, he, to him who judged justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but now have now but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Here in Sarides. You may rise for the reading of the gospel lesson this morning. It is from John chapter ten, verses one through ten. Reading in Jesus' holy name. Truly, truly I say to you. He who does not enter the sheep's fold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens the sheep voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he has brought out all of his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. For they know his voice, a stranger they will not follow. But they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of the stranger. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but then did not, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. And so Jesus again said to them, 
Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep do not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go into in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hireling is not the shepherd. Here ends our gospel lesson for this morning. Uh, let us now join in confessing our faith, and we thank of all of our brothers and sisters uh, across this great country and around the world as we confess it together uh, in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He ascended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated on the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from where he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, and the forgiveness of saints, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May we lift our voices in our praise song, You Are My All in All. <coughs>
project a little something different here today. I would like all the children that are with us today come forward for a, a children's message today. But there's a caveat to this children's message. I need congregational participation. So when I give instructions, I would ask that you follow them as best you can to please help me with this uh, children's message. So come on. Why, good morning. How are all of you today? Good. Are you ready to, to help me out here with this children's message? See, today's children's message I'm going to take from John 10, and that talks about where there's a sheep and, and the shepherds, right? And what happens in this time is a really kind of unique thing. And what I'm going to ask now is would you be the shepherds today and help me? Normally, there would be a little bit more maybe here, but what I'm going to ask you to do is when I say go, I want you, each of you, to holler out as loud as you can and call for your sheep. You can do that any way you want. I'll give you the freedom that if you just want to say, here, sheep, sheep, or you want to just holler, come, you do it. But I would ask that you do it as loud as you can and as long as you can. How about that? Would you help me with that? In the congregation, I'm going to ask now that you are my sheep today, and you know what sheep say, bah. And so I'm going to ask all of you, at this time when I say go, to bah, not just bah, and please don't be bashful for those who think you can't do it. All of you can do it, especially all of you, right? Let us bah as loud as we can, and please don't stop until I signal that you stop doing it. How about that? Would that work? All right, are you ready? All right, congregation, let's start bang like sheep. Loud as we can now. Bad, bad. Start hollering for your sheep. It's called, say, come here, sheep. Come here, sheep. As loud as you can. Say, come here, sheep. Come here. Loud, loud. That's right. Good job. Keep going. Come here. Can you do, can do it too? All right, let us stop now. So the reason I did that is because Back when Jesus was alive, and what they would do is there would be a thousand sheep all gathered in one pen. And the shepherds would come in the morning, and they would holler for their sheep. Come here, sheep. Come here, sheep. And one of the amazing things about this passage is it tells us that the sheep know their shepherd's voice. So let me ask, could any of you hear the shepherd calling and decipher which of the shepherds were calling you? No. So we can imagine you standing outside of a pen of a thousand sheep calling out for your sheep. And yet the sheep have something amazing. They have good ears, discerning ears that they can hear. And so when we think of Jesus as our good shepherd, you guys have a lot of voices in your lives, don't you? Do you hear your mom and dad's voice? Do you hear your grandma and grandpa's voices or your teacher's voices or... Even voices of the congregation, right? But you know your mom and dad's voice, don't you? If mom and dad call for you, you know to come, don't you? See, me, it was always, George Raymond, I knew I was in trouble and I had to hurry up and get to where my mom was calling me, right? And so thinking of that, you and I and every one of us here have a special Savior and a good shepherd, Jesus. And so Jesus has a special voice, doesn't he? And it comes through his word to you as we listen. And with all the voices in the world, we listen to Jesus and what he has to say to us, right? And it's kind of hard when you think of all the sheep that are out here, isn't it? It was kind of loud, wasn't it? Yeah, it's kind of hard. But that's why I encourage you and all of the sheep here today that we must have discerning ears and always listen for Jesus, right? And so let us pray. Father God, I ask you to bless these little shepherds here today, that, Lord, you continue to guide them and lead them in your word, that they would hear your voice, and that they would know to trust in you and to look to listen to you throughout all of their lives. And, Lord, we just thank you again that you are the good and great shepherd at this time. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry, I don't have any probably gifts or treats, so if there's some somewhere hidden, we'll maybe get them to them after service, but I would just ask you to go back with your parents now at this time. So,
So as we begin, the title of the message today is The Flock of the Good Shepherd. It comes from John 10, but also it comes from Acts 2, 42 through 47. So may we begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the good shepherd. We pray now that by your truth of your word, you would sanctify us in that truth. You would encourage our hearts, that you would guide us and lead us in the right paths to go as we follow you. And may you speak to each and everyone here and those listening a live stream in a special way. Touch us as the good shepherd. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Doesn't get old, does it? So good to hear that. But understanding, even though all mankind, from the time of the fall, we have strayed like sheep, Scripture tells us. The Lord Jesus Christ, the one who has had incredible mercy, an overflowing amount of grace, willingly suffered and died for you and for me. He bared all the sins of the world in his body on the tree, Scripture tells us. And that's why I proclaim, and I love to say it even a few weeks after our Good Friday, or Easter morning, is that Good Friday is called good. It is not called Sad Friday. It is not even called Black Friday. But it is called good because Jesus suffered, and because of his suffering, you and I and all who trust in Jesus alone, our wounds are healed, it says. Because he endured all things that you and I as sinners should have endured on the cross. And yet the result, one of the greatest things I'm here to tell you today is that in this event, the greatest event to ever happen in his story. See, when we hear that word history, it is his, Jesus Christ's story, right? And in Christ's glorious resurrection on Easter morning. One of the greatest things is that now your and my benefit of all that took place then is that he gathers us. He gathers us as sheep of his fold. Each one who has gone astray, he gathers to himself. Not as a mere earthly shepherd, but a victorious good shepherd. And so the question may be, what does that mean? What does it take to be a sheep of the good shepherd's fold? What does it take to be a part of his flock? And today, in our text, Jesus boils it down to this. One simple thing in the gospel lesson. My sheep listen to my voice. So what makes you a true Christian? What makes you a true follower of the Jesus of the scriptures? is that you listen to his voice. Not only do you listen, but as sheep, we obey and follow the good shepherd. There is a bunch of references throughout scripture, right, about sheep and what God has to say about being a sheep. And if we're honest, being a sheep, if you know someone who has them or you know anything about them, being called a sheep isn't very flattering. Much could be said of even about how maybe not smart and helpless sheep can really be. But I'm not going to talk about that today. The main thing that I want to talk about about these sheep today in the text is I want to point out to each and every one of you the one good and great characteristic of a sheep. And as I spoke with the kids earlier, they hear they have very discerning ears. See, the way sheep were cared for in Jesus' day, as I had made a little mention of, is good for us to understand, as I always believe, context, context is what teaches us about the Word of God. The towns in Jesus' day they would have a very large pen that would be on the edge of town. And all of the shepherds would bring in their flocks at night for safety and safekeeping. See, this would allow these tired shepherds who had been out in the fields with their sheep to go home, to get much needed rest, to fill their bellies, and to visit their family. And each of these pens that were outside of the cities would have a gatekeeper. 
And the gatekeeper's job was unique and special, and it was very important. The gatekeeper would attend to the flock at night and make sure that none, no one of the sheep would be stolen. And in the morning, the, sheep, the shepherds would come to their pens, and they would call out to their sheep. Each flock then, and an amazing thing from what I understand about it, is the sheep would gather together as a flock, and then they would go and follow the voice of their specific shepherd. And so you can imagine the chaotic scene from our little demonstration that we had here. Thousands of sheep from many different flocks, all in one giant pen. Dozens of shepherds are calling out to their flock, all at the same time. And you're in the midst of all of that chaotic scene. The thousands of sheep, bah, bah, and making noise. And the dozens of shepherds hollering and calling for their sheep. Personally, I'm thinking to myself, what sensory overload, right? And yet in the midst of all that chaotic noise and loudness, the sheep, with their greatest quality of their discerning ears, would hear the voice of their shepherd. And they would go towards his voice and follow him. The scriptures relating you and I to sheep are true, whether we like it or not. And think about this with me for a minute. This world, this crazy, chaotic world that we live in is full of voices shouting at you. Shouting at you day in and day out. All sorts of things are happening in this busy and crazy world. Busyness trying to get your attention we can just think of a few things here. Social media, the news attempting to draw you away to follow their voice instead of a good shepherd. The voices of entertainment. We even have thieving false shepherds prevalent in our society and on TV and on the internet drawing you away from the good shepherd with twisted truth, half-truths. Your work does the same thing. And believe it, we don't like to admit it, but our family and friends often are a voice that draws us from our shepherd. See, in our time today, it is ever more, I proclaim to you, a necessity for you and I to have sheep's ears of discernment. So many false teachings, so much preaching has crept into the church claiming political views and parties and agendas Biblical twisting of God's truth to fit the way people feel instead of the truth of Scripture. So many questionable social media prophets this day are popping up like termites in a, 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 an infested house that are claiming new revelations from God, and yet they seem godly at first listen. But then I always say we go to Scripture to be our guide and be our, our, our lesson. Matthew 24, Jesus says, Watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Christ and will deceive many. That's a little troubling because it doesn't say may deceive. It says will deceive many. And it says here in verse 6, You will hear of wars, rumors of wars, and see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. And it tells us in verse 8, all these are the beginning of the birth pains. And that's why I say that it is so important for you and I to have discerning ears. To be continually praying and reading God's word. Simply put, your feelings can't be trusted. Quite honestly, your experiences that you have had can't be trusted. A true follower of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, walks by faith. Walks by the word of God, Yahweh. And the traits of a Christian are you first walk by faith in the finished and complete work of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. 
And secondly, is that you have a love for the scriptures and a love for other people. How many of you need to repent this morning of allowing busyness to enter into your time with God? And I say that. How many of you this morning need to repent this morning of allowing busyness and other things and voices to enter into your time with God? And if we're honest here, you and I always make time for stuff we want to do, don't we? You seem to always make time for the things that you want, don't you? And the hard truth is, is we don't make time and hold ourselves accountable to being with Jesus, the good shepherd. Or spending time with the Father and his word, other than on Sundays, for an hour or two. Or a passing moment during the week. And I will say this in caveat that praise God this day if it is a priority in your life that you spend time with God and Jesus each week, each day even. And as a result of not spending time with Jesus and in his word daily, many people are straying like it talks about the sheep. Many are walking on dangerous paths without a shepherd to guide them and protect them. We hear of the wandering sheep that James tells us to go after. And since he has called us by this great gospel that you and I have received, and we are now dear sheep of the shepherd, we need to listen to his voice, hear his voice, know his voice, John 10, 3 and 4. And in faithful preaching of the gospel, we follow him and we are encouraged and our faith becomes alive. And since he has called, uh, since we have received the gospel, we have an abundant, joyful life, a common community and unity in a flock of Jesus under the one good shepherd. The apostles' teaching and the fellowship and in the breaking of bread we heard in Acts 2, 42, we see that they allowed the law of God's word to be the guardrails, I say, of our life and our faithful journey. In the last part of our epistle lesson, we find what I like to call the keys to the church foundation. Verse 39 and 40, we find Peter proclaiming that Jesus, Yahweh, y Yeshua, saves yesterday, today, and always. For the promises for you and for your children and for who, all who are far off in the generations to come. Everyone whom the Lord calls to himself. In verse 40, and with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them saying, save yourselves from this crooked generation. And so those who received his word were baptized and there were added that day about 3,000. I don't know about you, but when I read that, I'm like, wow, right? The church growth, if we're honest, has plagued the church for long before the pandemic ever happened. Many books have been written, video series have been made on this subject. And sadly, if we're honest, according to the word of God, 98% of them missed the mark. And I will tell you something true about each and every one of us. That the human nature is predictable as much as we think we're not. If you plan extravagant programs for your church, kids ministries, adults ministries, rock show, worship, praise, entertainment, to grow your church, the reality and the truth is the only way you will hold them for a long time, you will not hold them for a long time because the human nature arises and people get bored. And they get tired of it. And so if that is the church growth or the mindset of growing and expanding the kingdom of God, the flock of God, we always have to understand that our human nature, if it is in programming, light show entertainments, you have to up your game over and over and over. And I say this to contrast what is being said in this Acts 2 passage. Contrast what has happened this day of Pentecost where these 3,000 people, wandering sheep, came to faith. 
The truth of it is there was a small, tiny congregation of 120 people in fellowship at the beginning of that time. And they, the scriptures tell us, were steadfast first in prayer. Then they were students, hungry with a desire to learn of the apostles' teachings and of the scriptures. These people had a desire to encounter the Holy Spirit personally in their lives and together as this congregation. And we know from the word that this small, faithful flock of 120 in prayer and giving of supplication, 3,000 wandering sheep came to faith. And honestly, I'm going to be honest with you here. As a pastor, I want this today. I'll be honest, I desire to be a part of this kind of movement of the Holy Spirit here now today. And I pray that you, this wonderful congregation of St. John's and Schwer, desire the same, to see the Holy Spirit moving and moving powerfully in your congregation and in this community. What was, of the, what was the early church doing? They were not focused on programs, light shows, or feeling-driven songs with bad theology. But rather, they were committed. They were sold out, you could say, to the word. Verse 42, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, praying, giving of supplications, a culture of fellowship, breaking bread together. And this one always gets me. And this is the greatest challenge for us today, I believe. They were doing this daily, friends, not just on Sunday mornings. And I believe you could say that they, in some ways, were chilling in all that the Holy Spirit was doing in his work. They were waiting on the Lord to move and direct them as a congregation. And one thing I've noticed, often people, when the Holy Spirit-filled preaching is happening... People get fearful of it. And it shouldn't be so, friends. We should desire the power of the Holy Spirit. And this isn't in my notes, but I'll give it to you anyway. You want good preaching from any pastor who steps into this pulpit. It is on your prayers, friends. Pray that the Holy Spirit is moving powerfully in the man who stands in this pulpit and proclaims the word of God to you. Let the power of the Holy Spirit direct and guide this person. Because quite honestly, the evidence of the Holy Spirit's work is found in the love for people. In the love for the truth of God's word, seeking to apply it to those we inter interact with and to ourselves. If our understanding of a scripture is that it is made and was given by the inspired word of God for our teaching, correcting, rebuking, and guiding, I say, let it be so. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you want to see your church, if you want to see this community in this world we live in changed, let us take some encouragement. Let us take some lessons and model the early church. Let us land. I'm going to land this plane of this sermon now for us by simply making some applications from John 10 and Acts 2 so that it, you can apply it to your lives and to the life of the church. Because understanding that the church is something special, friends, it is called the bride of Christ. First, as a sheep of the good shepherd's flock, you and I must always with listening and discerning ears, hear the voice and follow the good shepherd above all things. We must learn to trust that the Holy Spirit is working in you and in me and in this congregation. In Yeshua, Jesus' ascension, he gives us the Holy Spirit as a gift. It's not a cheap gift. It is a gift with great power. And I love this wonder-working power, right? Second, not with lip service, but truly devoting ourselves to prayer and supplication for each other and for the church and for the community and for our world. There is great power in prayer. 
1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. The great power comes, and I tell you, it comes in our faith. Our faith that is in the one we are praying to. It is not our strength. It is in the power and the strength of the one we pray to. That we can come to verses like 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. And I will forgive them their sins and will heal their lands. As brothers and sisters of the risen king, if we model Ephesians 6.18. The Lord says, pray in spirit for on all occasions with all kinds of prayers. Request to the Lord, he says, ask. And with this in mind, be alert. Be discerning and always keep on praying for all of the Lord's people. When you pray, the, the Lord God hears. And knowing this, that in his promises, which are true, that he will accomplish his good work. The promise that he works all things out to the good pleasure of for his redeemed children, the sheep of his own flock. Third, and a very important one, is to, to ever be students of the word. I encourage you, gather together and study. Come together in fellowship, learning together as the Holy Spirit would lead you. And individually, learn the word. Come together in small groups and congregationally together. The best way to not fall prey to the devil's deceptions is to know his word like your favorite song. Our Savior, when he was tempted in the garden, he was, or in the wilderness, I'm sorry, the devil, he responded to the devil with what? The word. For as it was written. And the mind is a powerful tool, I tell you. And I remind you that by the time the person is 18, they know a thousand songs by memory. That's what they say anyway. And yet the most people, and most at people at that age or older, can't even recite a single passage of Scripture correctly in its entirety. And I simply tell you, friends, it's not rocket science. It's simply repetition. Develop a culture of true fellowship, breaking of bread together. Come to encourage one another in a healthy Christian environment. People need people. People need fellowship. And quite honestly, I believe that is more true today than in the last hundred years. And as we draw closer to these last days, it is ever true. A side note here is there is no true translation for the word fellowship, koinonia, in the scriptures. But when we understand what it means and the heart of what that word means, koinonia, it means close communion of one mind and together. And Hebrews 10, 25 says, do not neglect to meet together as it is a habit of some to encourage one another. Out of all the more as you see and know the day drawing near. And that is the day of the Lord's trumpet call and the last day he gathers us together. So friends, saints of the risen Savior, the Holy Spirit brings growth and spiritual growth in our hearts and in our minds. He also is the one to bring numbers in our congregations of growth. And I'm telling you, if it is the Holy Spirit's work it is the Holy Spirit's responsibility to keep them and guide them unto a perfect salvation, complete when they see their Savior. I tell you, light shows and imitation program of man will not hold them, friends, or grow them faithfully in the Word. So let us draw from our brothers and sisters of the early church and take the right path of our lives in the bride of Christ of the church today tomorrow until the glorious return of our Savior. There is a promise where two or more are gathered in my name. There I will be. What more do you need of an encouragement to gather together as brothers and sisters knowing that when you do, your victorious Savior is with you.
And so I ask you, because this is the psalm of this week according to the lectionary, I invite you to with me recite Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. May our heart's desire be as it was in the days of Pentecost, that day by day attending the temple together, breaking bread in our homes with those that need that fellowship. They receive their food, it says, with spiritual food for the heart and for the mind. They receive their, spirit, their physical food with gladness and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people for doing so. The Lord, by way of the Holy Spirit leading them, added to their numbers day by day those who are being saved. Amen? Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Oh, it doesn't get old, does it, friends? So at this time, we will turn to our offering. And
Now at this time, we will take up our offering. give you thanks this day for your graciousness and your goodness, that you are the giver of life, breath, and all things material in this life and in this world. We give back a portion of those gifts to you to honor you and to give you praise for all that you have given us. May you multiply them and use them for your kingdom's work here and now and to your glorious return. Amen. May you join with me in prayer at this time. Heavenly Father, we come to you as the great shepherd, the as the sheep of your flock. And Lord, we lift up today Juanita and Joanne to you. We also would come to you. And for those who are in need of healing, Gordon, Rick, Logan, Carter, Linda, Tim, Norm, Wendell, Danielle, Robert, Diane, Randy, Gunner, Casey, Michael, Ty, Eli, and Delbert. Lord, we also think of these wonderful children and Lord, as you are continuing to bring new ones into this world, we give you thanks for Willa, Lane, Kennedy, Elena, Madeline, and Joanne, Joanne. And so, Lord, we also think of your church. We pray that, Lord, you would continue to be the guiding shepherd and that your Holy Spirit would continue to lead and guide Tracy, Dane, Craig, Corey, and Stuart. We thank of the faithful work of the call committee in seeking a new shepherd, Warren, Nita, Amy, Cole, Carol, and Stuart. And Lord, we want to lift up our nation to you. We pray that our leaders in our nation's capital would come to full repentance and repenting of their sins and follow you. And then so lead and govern in a way that would honor you and be to the good of all people. We pray for the world leaders throughout all the world and those in authority and power. We would ask that again, you would guide them and lead them and draw them to you. We pray for our military men and women and their families as they serve our country and continue to fight for our freedoms and they give of their lives even in that service. We think of the local police men and women, the first responders, as they are the witnesses of the, what sin is in our community firsthand. We pray for their safety. We pray for their guidance. We pray for the AFLC that you would continue to strengthen them and hold them true to your word. We pray that the Lord, that the field is ready for harvest and we need workers so lord we pray this day that you would continually to lay it upon the hearts of men to be trained and to be lifted up and to follow the calling of being an under shepherd to you the good shepherd 
And so, Lord, we pray now for all things of St. John's here, that, Lord, through your greatness and your faithfulness and your blessings, that, Lord, you provide and you give all things. We give you glory in Jesus' name as we pray together the prayer that you, our Lord, has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the fear, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, before I pronounce the benediction, I would ask that you sit down again, please, ladies, for a moment. Yeah. At this time, I'm going to invite Tracy, our president, back up to you. Uh, give an announcement at this time for you guys. So yesterday, uh, Pastor George and I made some visits, and so as our tradition has begun, we go out for breakfast before we make our first visit. And so as we're talking He's asking me, have you heard from, from Joe? I'm like, no, I haven't. And he's, well, I'm kind of surprised you haven't heard something by now. I was like, well, it's really only been, I think, seven days since he's had the, the call letter in his hands. And so, and it wasn't too long after that. A couple seconds. My, <laughs> my phone starts vibrating. I don't have it on a ring. And I typically... It's a work phone, so I, on the weekends, I typically let that go to, to voicemail, and I couldn't see it, so I felt it vibrating, so I'm, I don't even know why I looked at it this time, and it was Joe, because I got him in my, in my contacts now, so I'm like, oh, it's Joe Freck, <laughs> and, and pastor's going, ah, oh, take it, take it, you know, so, well, the breakfast wasn't that good anyway, so, like, <laughs> yeah, I'll take it, what are, you, what are you doing, I said, well, I'm eating Breakfast? Breakfast? It's like 11.30. I go, well, maybe we call it brunch. But anyway, he said, well, I have a, uh, I'll tell you how it uh, went down. So he said, after prayerful and consideration and discussion, Danielle and I have decided to accept your call. <laughs> so praise God for that. And uh, Yes, yeah, so we're not sure of the final details. He will be, um, he's had some baptisms, I think, at the end of this month. He graduates in a week. So sometime, looks like the first week in June that he will be uh, coming here. So that uh, is exciting. We'll iron out those details as we get a little closer. But I wasn't sure when, that, when he would uh, be coming, so that was a great discussion there, too. And so... Wow, is an incredible moment at that time. And so God works it in his way. And thank you for your prayers. And Joe thanks you for his prayers and his wife. And, you know, so they continue to ask for prayers as they will be moving away from their, their family and uh, uh, being a new shepherd. So that's exciting. I'm excited. God is good. And he will take care of us. And will dismiss us with benediction. Yeah. And I've encouraged the, the council to keep the call committee together for another few months to continue to meet. How about that, right? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah, I know you probably are the most ones who are relieved at this time that God's faithfulness and provision. So let me pray at this time. Father God, we want to give you praise. We want to give you rejoicing praise and resounding thank yous for being a faithful God and answering prayers. We pray now that, Lord, you would protect Joe and his wonderful family as they are transitioning through graduation and in this move to come and to be the new pastor here at St. John's. And so, Lord, we would just rejoice in that. We pray for your guidance, your provisions, and your protection. And, we, Lord, we just want to give you thanks that you are a good and gracious and awesome God. Amen. Amen. May you stand and receive the benediction at this time. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and make your whole spirit and soul and body kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He 
who calls you is faithful, and he surely will do it as our good shepherd. Amen? Amen. Amen. In this long intro, we encourage you to give God thanks for our wonderful news. So through this long intro, give God your thanks, and then we'll sing together the blessing. joyfully this week.